Okay, this colony has European fowl brood. We've been, gosh, we're two thirds of the way through our whole outfit, inspecting and feeding and stuff. And this is the first colony we've run across that didn't look right. The first, kind of the big red flag here, is the brood patterns very poor. And the camera, I don't have a close-up lens, so this isn't going to pick it up really well. But uh, some of the larvae are not right. Um, if you look very closely, a few of the larvae have kind of a yellow, very light, light yellow hue to them, which is a red flag. And then we got larva. Kind of has a kind of sagging in the bottom of the cell. It's definitely European fowl brood. And in the past, I would have treated this with antibiotics to pull it out, but I'm not doing that anymore. Or, or for better or for worse, we're not using antibiotics like I used to. I'm happy to report that it's the only one we've seen, uh, so you know, it's not like we've got an epidemic here or anything like that. Everything else take looks really good. Did they take your bucket? Yeah. The rest look very good. They don't have hardly any pollen in the comb, but today pollen's coming in in a very big way. Every colony's hauling in tons of pollen, so they're beginning to turn a corner here. And also that's something to consider because we've been, we're just coming out of a pollen dearth. Our colonies actually have been experiencing a bit of a nutritional deficiency. I guess you could call it a bit of malnutrition. And that, that can play into it also. Uh, very well nourished colonies, properly nourished colonies do not succumb to issues as easy as ones that are malnourished. So um, we can see all the pollen on the landing board. I'm with Selena here at the small bee yard we have close to the shop and she discovered something on the last inspection that was a surprise. She found a couple colonies that had European fowl brood here also. These colonies are pretty small. Um, they're just kind of remnants from the end of the season, nukes, whatever. And we've done something unusual here. We actually put paper towels on these with camphor oil and tea tree oil. I've had a couple of friends tell me that it works with European fowl brood. That's not a very good brood pattern. From here, I don't see any sick brood though. No, I don't either. These look okay. And you said that one down there had it for sure too, right? Oh yes. Okay, let's go look at that one then. Okay. Bees are bringing in a little pollen, so that's always helpful. Good nutrition makes a difference. If you stand back here, you'll be you won't yes. create a shadow. So this, uh, I'll share the recipe here after we're done. Again, a pretty weak colony, but they were weak, so it's not something that surprised us. Again, this one had European fowl brood for sure. pattern but they're looking pretty good Bob. So you don't see any of the sick brood you saw five days ago? I don't, ago. no. That's almost too fast. It's, not, it's like can't be that good can yeah. it? Yeah. Can I, let's hold that so try to shine it right, turn it over where most of the brood is, shine it right, that's perfect. Let me see if this camera will pick it up. I'm like you, I see zero cells of infected brood in this thing. I see eggs, I see some larva. And the larvae look healthy. And the larvae look like they're supposed to, pearly white. I don't see any issue, and you're, and you're positive that this one had. This one had I it. know for sure. Okay, yeah. let's look at one more frame and okay. see what's going on. Mm. 
Well, just from they here. They look great. Just they from here, great. it looks okay. Yeah. Not the greatest pattern, but no. you know, if they were cleaning up a mess, uh, it wouldn't be. I see everything looking really good from here. I don't see not one cell of issue here. So all you did was give them a paper towel, a blue shop towel, actually half a shop towel with that uh, recipe, That's and right. you gave them a double dose of the probiotic. probiotics. Yeah. And I don't even see a bucket on this thing. You didn't even feed this it. This one wasn't you? fed. It had, it had some it's food heavy. in there, and we were going back to check them to see if they need to be fed today. Yeah, today. So from this, yeah, I see you didn't feed very many of these. So from this point on, everybody's going to get some kind of feed, even if it's just a jar with a single two-penny hole in it, just something to keep them stimulated. All right, I'm back in here with Seth and uh, Selena. Seth pointed out that this one was absolutely sick because he actually wrote it on the lid. So we're going to have a look at this one. This one got feed too, so. And it I was also this... requeened on that same. Oh one. yeah, you put a brand new queen in it, so that should help. Okay, there's the paper towel. And not a very big colony, is it? Not me. No. It was only like two or three frames when I got in there and it was on the brink of death. Okay, take a good look at that thing. Mm -hmm. They're looking a lot better. Mm -hmm. I don't see one single cell with an issue. That's okay. good. Okay, Seth, I'm gonna, let's go over this again. But you wrote sick on the lid, so you were absolutely sure it was oh, sick. Oh, for sure. What's the date on Nine, the lid? The 7th. Almost two weeks. Almost two weeks since they worked these. I was mistaken about it being just a week ago. So those towels have been in there for just a little under two weeks, and we are now seeing no European fowl brood issues in these colonies. Smooth move, Bob. Well, Pretty impressive. I, I'm still like it. <laughs> Okay. Got you wondering, huh? We're going to keep playing with this one. Okay, Jesse, uh, give me that recipe for the tea tree towel. I know the recipe we have is a big bulk volume, but and that's not what we're doing, but give me the big bulk volume recipe and people can do their own math. Okay, well, uh, the recipe that was given to us was uh, a gallon of canola oil and uh, tea, 200 milliliters of tea tree, 200 milliliters of eucalyptus, and 100 milliliters of camphor. Um, we uh, just were trying this as a, an experiment here at the shop here, at the shop yard, and so we just cut it in half. I still have, I still have some left over, so, uh, but it seems like it's done its work. Uh, well, we looked at two colonies here that we knew had European fowl brood a little less than two weeks ago, and we can't find anything in them bad. They're all cleaned up. And the, those towels were what seven days ago maybe no it's like actually that? longer i thought it was just a week ago but it, they were put in the day after the seventh we found the sickness on the sixth and put the towel in on the seventh so today is the 19th so it's 12 days yeah now, this is actually something that you know we were just curious about well i asked Jorg about it back and that's something i should bring up too jesse and i went and visited Jorg mayor at the University of Georgia, what was that, about a month ago? He's, uh, he's in charge of the veterinary school, 
at the University of Georgia. He's very smart on antibiotics, and he's actually an accomplished loud truck. He's actually an accomplished beekeeper himself. They have an apiary there at the college. He's very smart on this subject. He's really part of the reason that we're dropping the use of antibiotics and just trying to keep things under control with, as he would say, good bee husbandry. Um, we, uh, uh, we see a problem with antibiotics coming down the pike for beekeepers in general, and we're just going to try to stay completely away from antibiotics from now on. You know, in years past, if we saw a case of European fowl brood, we just get out a little teramias and give it to them into problem. And we're choosing not to do that anymore. And I think our conversation with Jorg will explain why. I'll try to have that edited and come out pretty soon. It was really long. We were there a long time. And I've got to put it down into a, a size that's palatable on YouTube, try to get that done in the next few weeks. And, okay. he, and he definitely was... Uh Telling us about the probiotics and the yeah. and the use of the probiotics and stuff like that. They've got a nice apiary over there. They do. And uh, after talking to him, I came away thinking that probiotics was a good thing and the right thing. He also recommended the brand we're using. He was using it himself. We're using Super DFM, which is a trade brand. If you want, to, anybody wants to go online, they can find that. We sell that in our store too. We have become a dealer for that product. So I'm sold on it. You know, I take probiotics myself. So why not? Bees the, love it. Bees, yeah. So I've they had just, they they eat it up. I've had two commercial beekeepers tell me that they saw a, a dramatic turnaround in their bees when they started using it uh, continuously. Uh, Selena says her, she can't even explain it. Her bees at home just look better. Yeah. And we've been using it. And although we can't point to anything in particular or prove anything. It's just strictly casual observation. Myself and all the beekeepers here think the bees seem to look better because of it. I think my bees look healthier because of it. Yeah, your personal bees are responding too, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I know that's a different subject, but uh, this is very interesting. This, I, I've looked at some research online about tea tree and camphor. I'm going to try to see if I can find that research. They talk about the active ingredient in those two oils that has effect on European fowl brood. See if I can add that to the video too. Yeah. Kind of exciting, really. I mean, we don't have a major European fowl brood problem, but I think for people in the industry that do, this could be something uh, worth playing with. And I also have to also have to say again that this is not an approved treatment for anything. A lot of beekeepers are using different essential oils for a lot of reasons tea tree included um, and we're just playing with this I there's no USDA approved anything for this so I got to caution beekeepers about that and I'm not in I'm really not in the practice of just uh, trying everything that comes down the pipe but I've heard enough people talk about this tea tree camphor oil that's got my attention plus listening to Jorg and what he said about it yeah. so anyway all right thanks